people must not abdicate their responsibilities of occupying their office of the citizen. They must not abdicate their responsibility of being citizens. If we have captured people who are willing to be captured in Kaobebe, you have a right to be a captured citizen. I don't, have, I don't want to be a captured citizen, and so I won't be. Wow, now this is brutal. This is brutal. Aisha Yusuf is very brutal and I love her courage. She's somebody that you can never intimidate anywhere she is. She's been giving this Abado people tough time. You know, remember there was a time she went to a function and a new national anthem that was passed into law by the Senate was being sung and she refused to stand up. And the people, they've been calling for her arrest, they've been saying all manner of things. But yet, you saw the other time, the super eagles refused to sing the new national anthem. So I don't know why it is all about Aisha Yusufu. Now, this Tinibu supporter came on a national television and said that Aisha Yusufu, that what she did is wrong and that she's not leaving a good example to the younger generation. Generation. As an activist, Aisha Yusufu simply took this man to the cleaner and told him that the man is a captured citizen, a captured slave, that she, Aisha Yusuf, will not be a captured citizen, will not be a captured slave in her own land. It's a very interesting discourse, a very interesting conversation. So I want you to watch the video. I will come back at the end. I will go to have a proper discussion on what just happened. Role models, activists, engagement farmers, and attention merchants. The world has evolved progressively to a point where we think there are no longer gatekeepers, as it seems. But we forget that gatekeeping is not only about shutting the door, it is about opening the door as well. And while it is more popularly known for preventing access, it is indeed very much about giving access. The actions of the popular activist Aisha Yusufu, as recently captured and shared on our own Twitter page, showed, us, showed her seated at an event in protest against the national anthem, while other citizens, despite their possible misgivings about it, honored the country. The behavior gives access to decadence in society. Speaking of gatekeeping, this is an example of an adult asking the younger ones not to obey the law of the land and its constitutions. The president, the office of the president and the national anthem are different expressions and reinforcements of our sovereignty at home and abroad that must be upheld and respected. My advocacy today is that we begin to employ a more constructive and intelligent way of opposition. Social media would allow anything does not mean that we should feed it anything. It is a show of shame and outright lawlessness. And speaking of the anthem, one would have expected that a more cerebral breakdown and analysis would have presented a more solid argument. It is akin to those who say the current president is not their president. Then, who is your president? You might as well cease from spending the currency of the nation. Okay. Okay. Who, I think my name was mentioned, so I. Uh, uh, right. yeah, go absolutely. First. Go ahead. Seven people, exactly. Ahead. That that interaction is what I don't want. Thank God that go you ahead. know about that. Seven people. When he mentioned that people who are oppressed, definitely was describing you. And there's something else that struck me in terms of the fact that you contradicted yourself. On one hand, you say, okay, the national anthem is different from the office of the president. And then you go on down the line to talk about people who do not accept the president, then they shouldn't use the currency. When did you match the offices and all those ideology or whatever it is that you wanted uh, to match? And what I found surprising was how you were talking about opposition. If we wanted to talk about opposition to government, then we should have brought the politicians here who are in opposition for them to discuss and not talk about them when they are not here at the table to be able to talk back to you too. And when it comes to issue of role model, fine, there were how many people there who stood up why are you not discussing them and telling us how they have been so much of a role model to you? And the thing is that people must not abdicate their responsibilities of occupying their office of the citizen. They must not abdicate their responsibility of being citizens. If we have captured people who are willing to be captured in Kaobebe, you have a right to be a captured citizen. I don't, have, I don't want to be a captured citizen, and so I won't be. So the issue of role model is for you to go on and be that role model. First of all, you called me an activist. I'm sorry, I'm not an activist. I'm an active Nigerian citizen who refused to be silenced, who refused to allow people 
who are the same. No Nigeria, Nigeria is more Nigeria than any Nigeria. And of course, those people yes. will not strip me of my citizenship because that's exactly what you're trying to do. And for the younger generation, you see what has happened. This country is as dead as it is because we have people who decided that they are not citizens, they are slaves. And they allow people to walk over them, Can do everything the on them, and continue to allow you specifically mention my name. So I have a right of response, and I will respond to you. And the way I sat down here and listened to every word of ridiculousness and every insult you tried to put there, you will also see that, and you will listen to me. Minutes. And you know another thing also is the fact that <laughs> the people who are educated, they are the worst kind of people we have in this country. That's they are the mentally abducted people who come out and put a persona of intelligence. They think they are intelligent. The next person is, if you wanted us to quickly okay. move on to the next well, person, quickly, you, should have you should not have mentioned Aisha Yosufu. You should have spoken on your advocacy. You have so now that you have you mentioned Aisha Yosufu, I'll, since you I'll borrow your, I'll borrow your take on And now that you have mentioned Aisha right. Yusufu, you will listen to Aisha Yusufu and, that's and you will not interrupt Aisha Yusufu okay. the same way Aisha Yusufu sat down and listen to you. Okay. And so for the younger generation, we have a country that is messed up. We now have lived, gotten to a stage where our children are stateless. They are running all over Imagine the world looking for place. where they will make, they will call home. Because we have please, people like Linda Obebe who have said that they are captured and, and they have a right to it. I don't have person, any issue with that. But please ensure that when I it comes to Nigeria, you stand on what you need to do. You said that before, and I didn't interrupt you. You've said that before, twice. There's no amount of of rebuttal you want to give that changes that you can listen I don't to, want to change it. again no. and you probably understand it better i don't want to, to i don't to want to change your advocacy you have a right to it you see we have a very big problem in this country and that is the fact that most nigerians do not understand what patriotism is all about they think that patriotism is when they are loyal to a president they think that patriotism is when they are supporting the policies of a president even if it doesn't mean well for the overall good of the nation they think that patriotism is when they are supporting their brother that is in power, even when the person is not doing well to move the country forward. They think patriotism is praying for the country. They think patriotism is speaking well for the country. Where, if you fall among these folks, I must tell you the truth. Patriotism is calling your government in power to do the right things for the people. Patriotism is holding your government accountable, the government that pleaded for you to vote for them, the government that promises that it's going to fix the economy, the government that promises that they will fix insecurity, they will make you comfortable in your country, they will make you safe in your country. Patriotism means reminding them of their promises and telling them that if they don't fulfill these promises, you will not vote for them anymore. Patriotism means that you have to hold grudges to any party that have ruined your country. Patriotism means not voting for people that don't have anything to offer. Patriotism means that you must not vote for someone with so much controversy. Patriotism means you will not vote someone that is alleged to have committed drug trafficking. Patriotism means you will not vote for someone that is alleged to have committed forgery. Patriotism means you will not vote for an incompetent president and turn around to ask for prayers to turn the economy around. In case you don't even understand what patriotism means, now look all over the world. Citizens all over the world, they've shown that they are patriotic to their country. In France, there's what we call the French Revolution. The people were hungry. They went to the streets and toppled the regime and they enthroned good leadership. In Africa, we have seen the Arab Spring. The bad leadership in Africa accumulated to the suffering of the people and the people went to the street and overthrew the government. You saw what happened to Egypt, the Muslim Muslim country, they overthrew a Muslim president and bring in someone they know who fix the economy today. Egypt is a thriving economy. That is what patriotism is all about. You are patriotic to your country, not to your president. You can respect your president, you can honor your president, but your patriotism remains to, to your country. What you guys are doing on social media, supporting the administration of what this government is doing is not patriotism. What you guys are doing, calling for prayers, that prayer will fix the economy, is not patriotism. There is insecurity in Nigeria. Over 50 persons were killed in Kassina, 50 citizens 
50 blood of Nigerians were wasted in Kasina state. We are not talking about the ones we've been experiencing in Plateau state, in Benue state. But none of you have tweeted, none of you has called your, your president to ensure that the life of Nigerians are secured and that these criminal elements are brought to book. You are hiding it because you are supporting the president. You are not being patriotic to your country. You are patriotic to a man that will go but Nigeria will remain. There is hunger in the land, food inflation, inflation at 40%, Nigerians cannot afford one square meal now. Before we were talking about three square meal now, they cannot afford one square meal. But you are keeping quiet, you are even debating and saying that paying workers minimum wage above 100,000 naira will kill the economy. But you are not talking about the senators that are spending millions of naira in vanity. You are not talking about your president that is budgeting 15 trillion naira to build a coastal road. You are not talking about your president that budgeted 90 billion for pilgrimage. You are not talking about your president that budgeted 5 billion for yard, presidential yard. You are not talking about the 21 billion that was used in building the office of the VP. Imagine if this money have been plunged into the economy. Do you know what it will do in the economy? You are not patriotic. You are patriotic to a person. A person whose lifespan on this earth will not exceed 15 or 20 years. But Nigeria will remain forever. And you have a born kids that will experience what this man you are supporting has done to this country. Many multinational companies are leaving the shores of this country. Do you know how that is going to affect the economy of this country? In five years, in ten years, you supported President Muhammadu Buhari. You all were patriotic to President Muhammadu Buhari. You, you went on the streets in 2012 to protest the removal of swear subsidy that was pegged at 168 naira. But you are not protesting when fuel is being sold for 800 naira and yet there is fuel scarcity. All through the eight years of President Muhammad Dubari, you never criticized him because you were expecting your tribe man to become the president. President Muhammad Dubari ruled for eight years. Despite his eight years, his home state, Kasina, is being besieged with insecurity. If development is all about tribe, why didn't President Muhammad Buhari transform his state Kasina? Just few days ago, 50 persons were murdered in Kasina state where President Muhammad Buhari is currently residing. Buhari took the third fastest growing economy in the world and ran it aground. President Bola Metinibu is now the president. Rather than learning from the mistake of making President Muhammad Buhari President ahead of a competent person, you are still making the same mistake with Bola Etinibu. Is it not obvious to you that Bola Etinibu is destroying the country? Is it not obvious to you that Bola Etinibu has no solution to the economy and insecurity in this country? If he has this solution, it would have been visible from day one in office. Leadership is not a rocket science. A person that is prepared to rule will start from day one. You will see it working. It is not by propaganda. Look at Argentina. The same period that Tinibu came into office was the same period that Javier Mili of Argentina came into office. They all had the same similar situation. Argentina economy was worse. The inflation was so high. But he has reduced everything and the economy of Argentina is working perfectly well. What has President Bola met Tinibu done? He has made everything worse than he met it. Rather than fixing the problem, he is busy blaming the same person he supported for eight years to be the president. President, are you all not learning lessons of your life? Are you really comfortable with the way the country is? Are you really comfortable with the Nigeria that Bola Metinibu is building? Are you comfortable that your children will grow up to meet this same economy? Are you not tired of being slave? Are you not tired of being captured? That you supported a candidate does not mean that you will not hold that government accountable. That you supported a candidate does not mean that you will not criticize that candidate. What we are playing in Nigeria is politics of destruction. And the worst of it is that it is not destruction in the parts of the politicians. Because these persons, they have money at their disposal that can feed their third generation. But what about you? How much do you have in your account? If there is anything in this country today that warrants that you must leave this country immediately, can you bought the next available flights to leave this country but the politicians you are supporting they have the world without to leave this country for you to suffer the consequences of their policies 
Take a look at your kids. Look at the school they attend. Can you compare that to the politicians you're supporting and defending? Look at the hospitals you have. Can you compare that to the healthcare facility that is at the disposal of the politicians you are supporting? We must not be captured in our own land. We must not be slaves in our own land. It's time for us to rise up and demand good government from these people. What they are giving us is not good government. And we must not take half big government from them. We must hold them accountable. If they fail to do what is needed, we must hold grudges against them. We must hold grudges against their party. And we must vote them out. You cannot keep reinforcing failure. Eight years of President Muhammad Ubari, and you see allow APC to continue in power. Look at all the institutions in this country. APC have succeeded in capturing and destroying every institution in this country. The reason is because we all kept quiet and we are supporting them. Enough is enough. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.